If you're like me, you shoot a lot of B-roll footage, and at the end of a project you're left with hundreds if not thousands of gigs of media that you don't necessarily want to delete but can't afford to hang on to either. I'm going to show you how I archive my B-roll footage to keep a clean, crisp image for about 10% of the size. For this, you'll need some B-roll footage, Adobe Media Encoder, and a LUT. If you don't have a LUT, just simply use Blackmagic's Film to Extended Video LUT. Let's dive in. Jumping into Adobe Media Encoder, we're going to put all of our footage here. So I'm going to highlight all of it, drag that into Media Encoder. So now what we're going to do is we're going to change the settings of all of these at once. So select one of your videos and then hit Control A or Command A. And we're going to choose where we output to. So find where you want to save your footage. In my case, I'm going to put it right next to the original in a new folder called Compressed. All right, select. And then you can see all of these change to that compressed folder here. We're going to do the same thing with our settings now. So you can hit your match source button. Now in this effects tab over here, what you're going to want to do is apply a LUT. And the reason we do this is because if we take this flat 6K image here and then try to color grade it after we remove all this data that we're about to remove from this compression, it's going to be really tricky to color grade and to make look nice. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to apply a LUT to it as we compress it. And that way we have a good, nice Rec. 709 color space to work with later. Then you're going to go over to the video tab and here's where we're going to tweak some stuff to shrink our footage. So you can either keep the same resolution that you shot on. In my case, I want to drop this to 4K. So what I'm going to do here is do 3840 by 2160. And you can see it does that for me. We're going to select render at maximum depth, scroll to the bottom of this page. And here is where we get a little bit of customization here. If you shot your footage in constant bitrate using Q1, Q3, or Q5, you're probably going to want to output as a constant bitrate as well. But if you shot in variable bitrate like I did at like 8 to 1 or 5 to 1, then I recommend using the VBR1 pass. So now we're going to tweak this target bitrate here. And I find that a number between 40 and 50 megabits per second is pretty high quality, but it also shrinks your files a lot. So I'm going to start with 40 here. Um, this is something you might want to experiment with yourself with some footage, but I found that 40 to 50 is a good number. After that, all we do is click Use Max Render Quality, hit OK. You can see all these are about to change. Give it a sec, your computer might freak out for a second. Now they all say Custom. And now simply run Media Encoder, uh, go get a meal, and come back when it's done. You can save all these settings as a preset, so it's just one click next time. Let's take a look at our new footage. Okay, so Adobe Media Encoder has done its job, it took a couple hours, but the footage is all rendered, so let's take a look. Before we had 265 gigs for these 28 items, and if we open our new folder here, we can see we have 28 items at 14.3 gigs. And let's take a look at some of our footage here. So this first shot is now down to 600 megs, and it is 4K, and let's see how it looks. So you can see we have the LUT here, it's all colored. Um, we could still tweak this in post with some more contrast and brightness curves and whatnot, but definitely have a nice clean image to work with for the future, but it's not nearly as big. So if you want to use these again for marketing or social media or anything like that, you don't have to hang on to these huge B-RAW files that you might use just once. So let me know what you guys think, if you have any other processes, uh, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. See ya.